Today we are going to be discussing oxygen sensors and the confusion that entails with them. Oh yes, there is a lot of confusion, especially in today's car market, right? Newer vehicles, newer technology, a lot more confusion. Many OBD1 systems utilized a one oxygen sensor system, right? One oxygen sensor for the uh, exhaust stream and that was it. That's all you really needed. Well, as technology moved on, things got more complicated. We ended up having two oxygen sensors, moved up to four. Now I think there's like eight on most newer vehicles, if I'm not mistaken. Many vehicles of the 2000s utilized four oxygen sensors. So I'm going to explain to you guys something today about them and their role uh, in the emission system components. Without an oxygen sensor, your vehicle is going to run rough. It's going to run erratically. You're going to have poor fuel economy. Now, I've already gone ahead and run the diagnostic on this vehicle. For this particular vehicle, this Dodge Dakota I have sitting here, I got a P0138 code, okay, meaning uh, once I ran the diagnostic on my smart smartphone, what it means is bank one sensor two is faulty. Now, if you get something like this, and you're thinking, oh, bank one sensor two, it's like, okay, well, uh, does that mean like the third oxygen sensor from blah 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 okay, you know you're sitting there pondering to yourself I have no idea well I'm gonna try and explain this to you bank one always 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 if you're dealing with a transverse engine like this one here in most um, pickup trucks SUVs and cars uh, a non-transverse engine meaning rear-wheel drive vehicles bank one is always the uh, bank where your number one cylinder is. Okay, so your number one cylinder is here. This is bank one. If you get bank two, this that means that this is opposite of bank one, meaning it's on the opposite side of the engine block away from cylinder number one. That's all it is. Bank one, spark plug number one. Okay, or cylinder number one, I should say. Always, always, and always, first and foremost. Bank one, number one cylinder. Bank two, opposite of cylinder number one. Very straightforward. Now, let's talk sensors. Okay, you get a code that says sensor one or sensor two. Well, that's easy. Upstream or downstream. <clears throat> and your auto parts clerk may ask you, is it upstream or downstream? And you're going to sit there, huh, what? I'm way too high for this, man. Okay, just calm down, chill, no big deal. Upstream is very simple. All it means is that it's pre-catalytic converter, or meaning that it is before the catalytic converter. Upstream. Downstream means post-catalytic converter, past the catalytic converter, right? It's very simple. So, you guys do the math, or the thinking in this situation. Sense, bank one, sensor two. You tell me which sensor is bad on this truck. You got it figured out yet? Bank one, this side of the engine block. Sensor two, past the catalytic converter. That's all there is to it. It's right here. So, we're going to proceed to go underneath the vehicle. We're going to change one of these. And what you do need, in order to change one of these, you're going to need a, uh, a special tool. These, if you guys have never changed one of these before, you know, these are roughly around $30. They're, you know, you can get really fancy, sophisticated ones. I think I paid around 25 bucks for this. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is all it is. Okay. Uh, also, another thing, too, when you do order a new oxygen sensor, you're going to want to make sure that you have the proper... Uh, you have to put sealant on the threads. Basically what it is is anti-seize. You got to make sure that you have that with you. Some of these uh, particular aftermarket um, companies will include them with the kit, right? Um, not all of them do. So to keep that in mind, when you're in an auto parts store, get some anti-seize, okay? Because some of these don't have it. Or before you leave the auto parts store, open up the box. And if you do have a little uh, container of lubricant in there, of anti-seize, then you know you're fine. But uh, don't leave without it, because you do need to put that on the threads. 
Okay, so we're going to cl climb underneath this truck now, and I'm going to show you how to remove one and install one. And then we're going to delete the codes to take off that pesky service engine soon light that everybody hates so much. Alright, so it's a very tight squeeze in here, mainly because I uh, don't have the vehicle on ramps. Thankfully, the uh, Dodge vehicle sit high enough that I can get under here. So, you take your spark plug socket tool. Okay, very straightforward, you know. Um, and just fit them on over top of the socket. It's a little dark in here, I know. Alright. Get them on it. There, just like so. Now I'm using a uh, an extension here. I might need a longer extension, and I'm using that as a uh, as a pry tool, so to speak, so I can uh, push against it. So basically, it's the same as the spark plug. You know, go ahead and uh, loosen them off. All right. Okay. So depending on what kind of vehicle you're working on. Uh, you may or may not have a, uh, a red tab that needs to be pulled here. If we can, if the camera can focus in on that, it's a bit of a tight area right here. But see, there's a red pin here. Um, just take a small screwdriver, pry it, and then uh, go ahead and loosen it with your finger. And uh, then go ahead and proceed to removing the pigtail from the wire harness. And when you get the little red clip. Um, out of the uh, socket here, just simply pull apart. Very simple from the wire harness, like that, just like so. It'll pull right out. Now I gotta route it over top of my transfer case to the other side, just like so. And we're gonna very simply twist them out of the hole, just like so. There's our faulty oxygen sensor. Now we'll go ahead and replace them with a new one, and uh, there is a, a few uh, procedures that must be taking place before you uh, uh, proceed to installing your new sensor. Unboxing our new sensor now. Okay, very straightforward. <coughs> this particular um, uh, manufacturer did include a new a tube of um, anti-seize in the kit which is great. Like I say, some do, some don't. So, okay, there's your anti-seize. You apply that to your threads on your sensor on installation. Okay. Um, some of them come with a cap to cover the sensor. For some odd reason, this one doesn't. Uh, so you're going to find a little uh, string, kind of like a shoelace string, that is uh, holding the, uh, the wire harness in place. So just like that. Okay, now I'm going to need this a little bit, just like so. Go ahead and open it, just like so. Apply it to the threads. Alright. the sensor. Try not to get it anywhere on the sensor though. If you do, uh, just wipe it off. Just like so. There we are. Okay, so while you're uh, threading in your new sensor, what you're going to want to do is just turn it maybe a quarter of a turn and then take your wire harness and flip it around too because what you, you don't want to continue to turn the sensor in and then keep twisting your wires because what could potentially happen if you twist the wires around too many times, the wires could break. So uh, just be forewarned on that, uh, you know, maybe go half a turn and then uh, feed your wire harness, uh, unwind it at the same time so that the wires are nice and straight, then go maybe another half a turn, see right now the wires are twisted, you know, take your wire harness, feed it through, turn it around, unwind it, do what you got to do so that the wires are straight and uniform, 
keep going until you until the base of the sensor hits the uh, base of the exhaust pipe kind of like your oil filter on your car right until the gasket hits the base well sort of like that as well and then once it stops turning take your uh, your oxygen sensor wrench your special tool and uh, tighten him down. Now, different torquing uh, requires for different vehicles, so I'm not going to tell you what your torquing is because you know it does. They're not excessively tight by any means, so. Uh, but you might want to check your repair manual on that, um, so you guys know firsthand for your particular vehicle. So what I did here is I fed the uh, wire harness to the other side of my transfer case. Uh, that's the way it was on my vehicle. So, like I said before, the wires are nice and uniform. They're not um, uh, all twisted. I'm going to actually take this little coated uh, cover here. I'm going to feed it down somewhat like that so it is actually uh, covering the exposed wires. Uh, you really don't want mud, crud, and corruption getting up in there. So, I'm just going to actually, what I'll do is I'll probably put a piece of electrical tape there so that it is fully covered. Uh, kind of protects the wires, right? So just feed the casing over top of that, just like so, so that the wires are aren't exposed. Um, like I say, nothing lasts, right? Oxygen sensors do fail, but you know, at least I don't want to be replacing an oxygen sensor that is good. But you know, just because the wiring went bad, you know, that's kind of a, you know, try and protect your investment. You probably paid 70 bucks for the sensor. So anyway. I'm going to go ahead and torque that guy down now and uh, plug him in and proceed to our next step, which is removing the DTC trouble code. All right, with that being all said and done, now is the time to take our tester, our, uh, our diagnostic tool. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn on... Well, first I'm going to plug the diagnostic into my diagnostic connector located right here. Okay, so... Right now it says it's reading. Uh, it's not going to get very far without the key on. So I'm going to go ahead, turn it on, and I'm going to give it a minute here. So of course the codes are still going to be programmed into the computer, right? The uh, so we still have the P0138. I did have a uh, another code uh, which implemented a. A massive uh, vacuum leak with the EVAP system, which is the uh, emission system components. But right now, all I'm getting is the same code. So what I'm going to do now is erase that code because I have already um, replaced the oxygen sensor, and we're going to go ahead and erase it. So once you replace your um, your oxygen sensor or whatever component was causing the DTC, you have to erase the code or you're going to have your service engine soon light steady illuminated. So <clears throat> the computer still says there's probably a fault somewhere and that's of, with my EVAP system. Um, unfortunately I have to find out where this massive leak is. But anyway, So that's how you replace your oxygen sensor, very simple. And once you erase the code, service engine soon light should go out. If it comes back on, well then there's a problem elsewhere, but like I say. Um, one day at a time, right?